Do you want to start airbrushing your RC bodies? I'm about to show you how using ProLine's new paint starting in just 10 seconds. Hey, thanks for checking back into RC Driver. Now, if you are a regular viewer of the channel, and I know that you are, you have probably seen this new paint rack lurking in the background of some of our recent videos. I am pretty excited to show this to you guys. This is ProLine's new paint. You know, we've known them for so many years, creating some amazing bodies for racing and bashing. Now they have paints to go along with it. This is some airbrush paint, and uh, you obviously need an airbrush system to uh, to spray it. We'll get to that in a little bit. But first, I want to go over the paints themselves. They are a water-based paint. Uh, there is a primary color set. There is a secondary color set, fluorescent color set, and a pearl metallic color set. And you could, of course, get the bottles individually. Uh, but these are mixed, so they're ready to spray out of an airbrush. And, and they're for polycarbonate bodies, Lexan bodies, and uh, some other materials as well. But, uh, you know, again, it's it's ready to spray. You just got to shake it up really well, pour it into your airbrush, and spray it. And uh, I'm pretty excited. The colors look fantastic. I can already think of a bunch of different paint schemes that I want to paint on bodies. And I haven't painted a lot of bodies recently, so I think this is really going to get me motivated to do it again. And overall, I'm just really excited to see that ProLine is expanding their options even more to help you customize your vehicle. All right, now we need to talk about the airbrushing system. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to head over to Harbor Freight, pick up a new airbrush, and I'm going to show you how easy it is to, you know, simply spray a body. All right, let's go. I'm back from my trip from Harbor Freight and I'm a little bummed out because I forgot my coupon for a free flashlight when I bought something. But I did get the airbrush. They had a number of different airbrushes there. Um, they had some really cheap stuff. It was like $8.00. And uh, there was a whole big set of five different airbrushes for like over a hundred dollars. You don't need the, you know, that. You don't need the crazy airbrush set. And and I wouldn't really suggest getting the cheap set. They had this one here. This one was about twenty dollars, and it is a dual action siphon feed airbrush kit, and uh, basically gives you you know the basics of what you need. It doesn't have the hose in there, so you have to pick up the hose separately. Um, I actually have a bunch of airbrush equipment already, so I'm just going to reuse the hose that I have. Uh, but they did have a hose there at Harbor Freight. And of course, you're going to need an air compressor as well. Um, I have a couple different air compressors. Actually, I have this small hobby grade air compressor from Grex. And I have a Craftsman tank air compressor. Um, so when you're at Harbor Freight, if you don't have anything, definitely check out the air compressor options. Uh, what you're going to want to look for is, is something that could really hold uh, air that's not going to drop in pressure as you're airbrushing because that causes a bit of problem when you're spraying. So, uh, you know, definitely check out your options. You're also going to want a air compressor with a regulator on there because you're going to want to regulate the air you know through the the airbrush so you get a the spray that you want to but back to the airbrush itself i mean this one actually looks pretty decent i mean it's blue anodized it's got to be good if it's blue anodized right and again it is a siphon feed so they give you two cups you know, i typically use the metal cup i don't use the jar that much and then we have the airbrush itself. So let me pull this out. Let me show you really quick how this works. So when you get your airbrush, you're going to put your siphon cup in the front. Let me do that too. You put this up in the front. It's just kind of a pressure fit in there. And then you're going to take and attach your hose. And uh, you're going to pour your paint in here. Now, when you go to actually airbrush, when you push down on a dual action airbrush on the trigger, that actually controls the air. And when you pull back, it controls the paint flow. It's a bit of a learning process, pushing down and pulling back to get the right amount of air and right amount of paint to come out. Um, and that's why I like to tell people to just practice on a piece of cardboard or a piece of paper or something like that before you practice on the body itself. Guys, I wouldn't be scared of it. What we're going to do here is we're going to take our ProLine paint, shake it up really, really well. Uh, ProLine recommends 30 seconds. I'm going to say shake it, you know, longer than that, like at least a minute or two. 
uh, really make sure you get those pigments uh, mixed up with the other additives in the bottle and that way you ensure that you know that you have maximum adhesion and it's going to work really well and not possibly flake off or anything like that so the other things that you have to know about is you know masking the body so i have actually have a proline body here we're going to paint this silverado for a project i have coming up and they actually give you window masks in here so you're going to want to go wash down the body with a mild dish detergent and really dry it out and apply your window mask on the inside and then any graphics you want to uh, to put on there. You're gonna need masking tape or liquid mask to do that. So I've got masking tape here. You're also gonna need a hobby knife to cut out your designs and a marker comes in handy to draw your designs on the outside and then cut out your mask on the inside of the body. We're not gonna get too deep into that detail in this particular video because this video is about the paints itself. So I'm gonna go get this body all set up. I'm gonna show you how easy it is to start air brushing your own body. All right, so I have my body all masked up and ready for painting. And one thing about painting bodies is you have to kind of think of how the paint needs to be applied in terms of the colors. So, you know, usually you want the darker colors to go down first, followed by the lighter colors. That way the darker colors don't bleed through the lighter colors. Sometimes that doesn't exactly work out. Like in my case, I'm gonna have darker colors below and I already have that masked off. So the key is to really just put down a good layer of paint uh, to make sure that the, the paint doesn't bleed through any darker colors. You could also back lighter colors like with white uh, and that will prevent darker colors from coming through. So with that said, uh, what I'm gonna start with now is uh, basically just doing like a fade coat on this uh, kind of jagged scheme that I did here. And uh, uh, the lower coat is going to be this green. So it's a little bit darker and the top is going to be this lighter green here. Um, so that's what I'm gonna do right now is put that fade, lower fade on on the edge basically. And all you need to do, like I said before, is shake this up really well. And then you're going to uh, you know, put some in the paint cup. Uh, and, and as I mentioned earlier, practice ahead of time. See how much uh, paint flow you need by, by pulling back on the trigger. See how much airflow you need by pushing down on the trigger and just you know play around with it until you're comfortable. And then of course, go and apply the paint. The other key is, is to wear a mask. I'm not gonna do that right now so I can talk a little bit through it, but you definitely wanna wear a mask when you're painting. Okay, so I have a little bit of paint in here and I'm just gonna start practicing with it. I have my air compressor set at 30 PSI and that's really all I should need in order to start painting. All right, I'm just gonna start off in the masking area to see how it sprays and then I'll just move up to the edge there and start spraying on the line. And you see that? Just a light fade. So just go back and forth, nice smooth strokes and just fill in the edge. So there's the darker green faded outline on the edges there, and I probably put about two coats. I went over the entire line, then waited for it to dry, and then put on another thin coat, and I am really impressed with how nice and smooth this paint flows, and it's got some really good coverage to it as well. Really, my only limitations were actually the airbrush, that uh, siphon cup isn't really the best. Maybe the jar would work a little bit better. And it will definitely do the job I needed to do in order to paint the body, but you know, if you really want to get into airbrushing, that's when I would go and recommend getting a better airbrush, maybe a Tamiya airbrush or an Eclipse airbrush. But uh, you know, just to get started, to get the feel of it, it's worth the 20 bucks. All right, so now I'm gonna wait for this to dry and then I'm gonna put on the main coat, which is gonna be this lighter green here. And uh, I'm gonna apply that in several different coats uh, just so there's nice and even coverage. Uh, to do that, I'm basically just gonna pull all the way back on the trigger, push all the way down so it's maximum paint flow, maximum airflow. You know, give myself about 10 inches away from the body, maybe a little bit less and just do the coverage like I would with a spray can basically. And again, just do light coats let it dry in between, and then I'll be ready to move on to the next step. All right, so I've got a couple coats of the pearl lime green on there and everything's looking really good. What I like to do is hold the body up to the light to see if there's any light areas, and that's when I know to go back and maybe spray a little bit more to, to make it a little bit more opaque. But it, it's looking pretty good right now. I allowed ample drying time between coats and uh, you, you could use a hair dryer to speed things up. One other thing I forgot to mention, 
always spray your paints in a well-ventilated area. Kind of goes without saying, but I just want to throw it out there. All right, next up, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to cut a pinstripe right along the inside of the line here. Uh, that will give me a nice separation, give me a little extra detail. And I'm actually going to paint that white. And the reason why I want to paint it white is one, I think it's going to look good when, uh, you know, it's all said and done, but it's also going to go and back this green. So it'd be nice and bright and the darker colors that I'm going to put down here won't bleed through. My pinstripe is all cut out, the masking tape is removed, and now it's time to spray the white. I've cleaned out my airbrush, basically just went over to my slop sink and washed it out as best I could, and then ran some water through it and there's no more green left. So now I could go ahead and spray a couple coats of white, and that's gonna kill two birds with one stone by filling in the white and then backing this green. After a couple coats of white, this green is really starting to pop now. You can really see the dark green along the edges and that white pinstripe looks very cool. It's got nice even coverage to it. That's one thing I noticed about this Proline paint. It's got really good coverage to it when you're spraying it. Uh, one thing I did find out about that airbrush, and, and you can do this with other airbrushes as well, but if you wanna get more paint flow out of it, uh, loosen up the needles, slide it back a little bit, tighten it back down, and that will allow even more paint to flow out. And that's how I basically painted these larger areas with that larger paint flow application. But uh, so far it's looking good. Next up, I gotta peel off this lower panel of masking tape. And we're gonna spray these colors next. I'm gonna do a black fade into silver. I removed all the masking tape from the bottom of the body and I decided to change up the colors a little bit after looking at the paint rack. I'm gonna go with this metallic charcoal as the fade and then the rest of the body will be this metallic pewter, which looks really cool. All right, basically the same process as I did with the green, just upside down and with different colors. So after spraying the charcoal, I thought the pewter might be a bit too dark, so I went with the Proline Aluminum and uh, I think that will give it a better contrast between the two colors. And I also went and cut out the window trim, so it's got a little bit more definition there. I think it's looking really good. Now the last thing I'm gonna do is go and back the entire inside of the body with black. That will darken up the silver. I won't have to worry about the green changing color because it's back with white, and it's gonna look really good when it's done. What I also did here is I cut out the overspray film in the bed, and I'm just gonna use the same black to spray the bed black from the top, and it'll give it the look of a pickup bed. The next time you see the body, it'll be all done. This is my first paint job with Proline's new paints, and I have to say, I really like these paints. They spray really well. I like the fine detail that you can get with them and the coverage is excellent. I think Proline really did their homework when coming out with these ready to spray paints and it's just gonna make your job a lot easier when you're getting into airbrushing. Or for those of you that are already into airbrushing, you know, I think you're really going to like these. Uh, the colors are just excellent. I love this lime green. I think the next paint job I paint is gonna be another lime green paint job. I love it so much. And all these other colors here as well. Just really cool stuff going on. I hope I hope I really answered any questions you had about getting into airbrushing. I think it's pretty easy. You know, a little bit of practice and I think you're gonna get it down pat, you know, and these paints are definitely gonna help out being ready to spray. Now, if you think you're ready to get into airbrushing and wanna try out these paints, what you could do is you could head it over to ProLineRacing.com and grab whatever paints you want. They have great sets or you could get them individually, grab a body or whatever. And then when you're in the checkout, you could use the discount code RCDRIVER10 to save yourself 10% on your order, which is very cool from ProLine. Full disclosure, we do get a little cut off of that, but you're saving yourself some money in the process. And again, this is a great new line of products from ProLine. Really excited to see all the stuff they're coming out with lately. And if you wanna see more stuff from ProLine, just keep following the RC Driver channel. We got a lot of cool stuff coming up.